Welcome back to another UNC football recruiting podcast here on TarHeelIllustrated.com. And if you're checking us out on our YouTube channel, Tar Heel Illustrated, I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones, and joining me is our director of football recruiting, Miss Dina King. And Dina, we're going to do three phases in this podcast. We haven't done one in a couple of weeks, so I want to catch everybody up to some of the stuff you've been doing the last couple of weeks with some of the committed uh, UNC commitments in the class of 2021. You've had a chance to see some in person uh, at the camps that you and, and VTO have been running. You've also seen some uh, kids that are offered, class of 22, class of 23, that you want to hit on a, a little bit. A couple kids have caught your eye. And then the last part of this podcast, we're going to talk about big time. I'm talking t- uh, nationally top 100 prospects from Virginia, Zach Rice and George Petaway. A couple kids we started getting to know a little bit back in June at a camp up in Virginia. They were at the NC State game. You talked to both of them extensively here in the last week. Zach Rice was in Charlottesville as a guest of uh, Mr. Glover this past weekend. So uh, we'll hit on them at the conclusion of this podcast. But three future Tar Heels that you've seen up close the last couple of weeks, had a chance to talk to and kind of gauge what they did against the last time you saw them, Kamaro Edmonds and Tymier Brown, in the eastern part of the state, we'll start with them. Uh, first of all, Camaro, I know I'll let me preface this by saying one of the first things you said to me is, Andrew, he's gotten huge. So take it away. Honestly, he I didn't recognize him. Uh, uh, Coach Caleb King, who was at Havelock for a long time, uh, who's now at Rose, he he had to point him point him out to me because he's like <laughs> He's over there in that Carolina hat. So first time seeing him, he's really built up. And, you know, first thing you think of, okay, is it, does it affect his, his speed, his agility? But he, he was dominant there in at Greenville at that combine. He, he showed, you know, his, his speed, his acceleration. So uh, it, it was great talking to him and seeing him in person. Uh, he's uh, really excited. He he's going to uh, play this spring for Havelock, and ultimate goal is to win a state championship for him. Well, how much bigger is he than the last time you saw him? And what did he do to put on the weight? And was it all intentional? Some guys have been putting on weight during this COVID stuff because they're they're nibbling a lot. Take us kind of through. Uh, him gaining that weight. He's up in the upper 220s, around 230. And uh, based on what I I found out, they've been doing a lot of weight training in this off season. So I don't necessarily think it's bad weight. He's just solid. I mean, I don't like to compare, but he, he looks his physique looks a lot like Elijah Hood, but he looks more. Uh, nothing against Elijah. He looks like he can go side to side better than Elijah would run you over if you're going, you know, from point A to B straight. But Camaro, you know, in that, that camp, he even lined up out in slots and receivers. So he, he's a he's a great, versatile kid that will, will do really good in Carolina's offense. So – Added weight, but you didn't see any difference as far as quickness, speed, agility. It's all just part of the process as he gets ready to go to college. Yeah, I I, I didn't see anything. I mean, I just noticed that, you know, he's got more more strength in, in everything. So, uh, and Havelock's got a great program. So, he, he's used to winning, and they're wanting to, to, to win a state championship. So, he clearly said that he was going to, play this spring this this fall um, excuse me this spring if if they get to play Tamir Brown what did you uh learn about him uh, since the last time you had uh, had any kind of interaction with him and how did he look well to be honest I had not seen Tamir Tamir, Tamir is almost like a mystery you know being in Jacksonville and like all the camps are kind of in the middle of the state and and everything, and him being in Jacksonville was, I haven't seen him personally until he came to Greenville, and I, I, I'm re- really impressed with him. He, DB, he plays quarterback, a little bit of everything for his team, because he is the best athlete 
at the school. So a lot of times the best athlete, they put them at the quarterback. Yeah. Look at Caleb Hood, who I, you know, talk all the time about. Caleb Hood plays quarterback. He can play a variety of, of places. But Tamir, he, he's DB, made a top five performance at, at the camp. Uh, he got an interception. He's really quick. I, I like his quickness. And Jacksonville, Onslow County is really well known to, for bringing some pretty good defensive backs to UNC. Kendrick Bernie comes to mind. And um, Deontay Williams, another one. So. I know you have a football crush on Caleb Hood. There's no doubt about that. Okay, well, you also had a chance to see Rara Dilworth again. You, you and Rara are getting to be buddies because you've seen him a lot. You saw him in the summer at a couple of different camps, the seven on seven, I think it was. You saw him, I don't know how many times you've seen Rara in the last four or five months, probably five or six times. He was at the camp in Moxville a couple of weeks ago. So what's the latest with Rara? Well, he continues to – Excel, he, he ran a 4.35 laser time and, and mop at the Mopsville thing, it was on turf. So um, he just keeps improving his times, his his strengths. He he says he, he keeps gaining weight. And so, I mean, right now, I think he weighed in around a 195, around that, that weight range at uh, Mopsville. But you know, I, I've seen, I think I counted up, I've seen eight UNC commits from this spring, summer, and fall. And if I was going to rate them, Ra Ra has impressed me the most out of all of them. So now take in consideration, I've not seen all of them. But if I was naming a top three UNC commits that I've seen in person, it would be Ra Ra, Drake May, and then Gavin Blackwell. Rob, we've talked a lot about Ra Ra, so we're not going to do too much on him here in this podcast. But every time I watch him do anything on video, he's so impressive. And then when he talks to you, he's so impressive. And then when you talk to the other kids in the class, they rave about Ra Ra. I got a, I got a sneaky suspicion, and it's not really a sneaky suspicion, that when he arrives, he's going to be one of those young leaders. He's going to be a kid that can ascend into a leadership role early on while he's there, maybe his second year uh, when he's at Carolina. Okay, we're going to do Zach Rice and George Petaway in a couple of minutes. Before we do that, so how about some of the other kids that caught your attention that you figure UNC either is recruiting or has at least been in communication with or certainly will be? A couple 22 and 23 kids. Of course, Bryson Nesbitt, I think he's probably the uh, most talked about remaining UNC target. Of course, with uh, Ingram's Dawkin committing to Georgia earlier um, this uh, on Friday, uh, but Bryson Nesbitt he released his top five last month: UNC, South Carolina, UCLA, Virginia Tech, and Ole Miss. And most people think it's going to come down between the Carolinas. And uh, he always talks about Coach Lilly, and I've heard a lot of people talk about Coach Lilly and his influence and his ways and, and stuff. So uh, he hasn't definitely set a, a date when he's going to announce. I know he's hoping to be an early enrollee, so it, it was going to probably be soon. And with the pandemic, I don't see him going too far off. And not to steer too much into this direction, but given – the realities around COVID and that everybody gets the year back and, and all that stuff. He's kind of like the only dude really right now that they're looking at the, to add to the, to this class with which there's 17 kids. So that would make it 18. I know that some of the committed kids said that they're still on him and they don't really give any other names when we ask. So would you think it's either Bryce and Nesbitt or bust? They're going to go either 17 or 18 in this class. With, with all the uncertainty, you know, I, I I don't see them pursuing anybody else unless there's a big decommitment from from someone. But I, I think Coach Brown and his staff like the, the bunch he's got right now. They're really tight knit. They're all in the group chat. That's what a lot of a lot of them talk about how close they are in the group chat and everything. So uh, I, I like this class. 
Real quickly, maybe a, a 22 and a 23 that you've seen at your camps the last couple of weeks that just caught your, grabbed your attention and that you want people to kind of keep an eye on to, to put on their recruiting radar. Well, defensive tackle, and I know most Carolina people are going to say, well, that's a position of need. And there's a vast wealth of defensive tackles in the state this year, especially in the 22 class. You have Travis Shaw, who's a national 10, top 10 player, a five-star. You have Curtis Neal. You got Santana Hopper. They're four stars. And then you got a kid I saw uh, this week, uh, the other couple weeks ago in Greenville, kid named C.J. Mims, who's out of West Craven High School on the coast. And uh, he's kind of under the radar, but he, he got an MVP performance at the VTO camp, and Duke offered him a, a day later. So that's a kid to kind of keep your eye on. And um, as far as 23, I've seen Rico Walker. I just saw him in Fayetteville this past Saturday. Saturday, yeah. He, he's a wide receiver athlete, 2023 kid. He looks like he's a he looks like a 21 kid. He's you saw him back. You saw him back in July, I think, too. Yeah, I, I, that's yeah. the second time I've seen him. We did an intro on him. Yeah. And uh, you know, he's playing wide receiver, and he's got freakish abilities and. I like him. He's got a UNC offer, a state offer, uh, South Carolina, I think Ole Miss, uh, Mississippi, excuse me, Mississippi State, and uh, Louisville maybe watching him and everything. But another defensive tackle in the 23 class, uh, uh, KJ Sampson out of New Bern. And New Bern's been pretty, uh, very good to North Carolina Tar Heels with, uh, their 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 recruits. So he he impre- he was like the probably the number two defensive tackle at that Greenville camp, and he says he's going to be in Wilmington. I'll be in Wilmington uh, this Sunday for another camp. So C.J. Mims, a 22 kid, uh, K.J. Sampson, a 23 kid defensive tackle. They're they're like run stoppers. That's what you know. UNC they could use a few right now. Huh? They could use a few right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Very so. quickly, let's go ahead and transition over to the last part here with Zach Rice and George Petaway. I saw both of them, talked to both of them back in June. We went up to uh, the Game Academy camp up in Virginia Beach and got to see Tony Grimes. This was a few days before he committed. You were at Tony's commitment uh, announcement. And uh, Rice was one of the most impressive kids I've ever seen at a camp. He's an offensive lineman. He's unbelievably athletic. He's a very, very sharp kid. I uh, really enjoyed talking to him. Petaway, really sharp kid, great athlete. Petaway looks like the kind of kid that probably wherever he goes is going to step in and play right away. He's a running back, four-star running back out of the Chesapeake area. So they were both at the NC State game here a week and a half ago, and you had a chance to talk with them extensively about their experience at the NC State game and just in how their relationships with UNC is growing. Very quickly, kind of take us through that. Start with Zach Rice. Like you just mentioned, they're they're great to talk to. I mean, in our field, we have kids that, you know, they they're not the most talkative, but I could sit and talk to these guys for for an hour. They they're really, really down to earth. Uh, Zach, he he was very positive in that visit to Chapel Hill with. Less than 4,000 people there. He was still saying the atmosphere was, you know, awesome. I guess he could possibly feel the rivalry playing between NC State and UNC, and the fans that were there were really into it. And he, his main recruiter is Coach Lilly, and he talked about the relationship that he's built with Coach Lilly and, and – and, and one thing that struck me about Zach is, and I mentioned it in the article, is that he looks at different things possibly than other recruits. He's, he's big on his grandma. He loves his grandma. And he wants his grandma to be able to watch him play and be comfortable and, and be cl- pretty much able to come watch him play. And he was talking about the seats in Keenan where the fans – 
the student section didn't have the backs and then the regular fans had the 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 comfy seats with the back and everything he thought that was you know he mentioned that and that's the first time i've ever heard of a recruit talking about i hope my my family are comfortable at the games to come watch me play so that kind of tells you what type of kid he is he's he's very unique very articulate and i really enjoy talking to him let me interject real quickly when i asked him about unc because this was not long after unc had offered him he said the first thing that he and his mom did was go on some kind of Google Maps thing, whatever, and figure out how many miles it was. For, he's from Lynchburg, Virginia. So from Lynchburg to Chapel Hill, and he's like, yeah, it's doable. So I think family and getting as much family as possible is going to be an important part of his decision-making process. George Pettaway, the running back from uh, Chesapeake, Virginia, four-star running back. And by the way, Zach Rice is five-star probably the best offensive lineman in the country. Uh, you talked to George Petaway as well. He was at the game. What did he have to say? Well, if you was a running back, that was an awesome game to be at yeah, because Javante Williams and Michael Carter both had really good games, and he actually got to see Coach Longo and, and the offense utilize that running back, and he was very specific on how UNC used them and talking about how they kept their backs fresh and – that's what re running back recruits like to see is keeping their backs fresh and getting the ball and getting the giving them the ball in space. And so he was very positive about the uh, UNC trip. And you know he's a he's a seven five seven kid. So you know the topic of Dre Bly come up. He actually said Dre Bly's my man, my guy. So and, and don't underestimate the Grimes factor with him and really with Rice as well, but certainly the Grimes factor in the 757 right now is huge. We're not going to, we'll do another podcast again about that down the road, but uh, he's certainly a part of the process here with, with Petaway. Dina, great stuff, kind of a smorgasbord all over the place, but it's been a couple of weeks since we've done one of these, so we had to stick our hands into a lot of baskets here in this one, but great stuff. Thank you. Thank you. All right, she's Dina King. I'm Andrew Jones. Don't forget to like this video if you like it, share it if you like it. Let your Carolina Tar Heel fans know about what we're doing here at TarHeelIllustrated.com. Go check us out, TarHeelIllustrated.com. For just $8.33 a month, you can access all of our premium content. Thanks for stopping by.